The transport panel can be selected from the transport menu if you can't see it. The key command is F2. You can do this with or without the project loaded. Let's open up project number 6, the transport. On the transport, we have familiar controls, such as rewind, fast forward, loop or cycle, stop, play, and record. You can turn the click on and off here, if you like a click during playback or record. Holding down control on the PC or command on the Mac, while clicking on the click button, opens up the metronome setup window to specify settings for the click. We'll go over some of these when we record later and cover it fully in level 4 of this tutorial series. Most of the time, you will want one tempo for the whole song, so turn off the tempo track and type in the desired tempo here. When the tempo track is on, Cubase reads tempo changes from the tempo track found under the project menu. You can also create a tempo track and change the tempo here. Let's keep this off and have a fixed tempo of 120 beats per minute. You can locate to markers by pressing these buttons here or show the marker list. We'll talk more about markers in Advanced Markers in Level 2 of this series. You can see the MIDI and audio activity and even click to have a master volume output fader open for your convenience. Right now, you are seeing the transport in its default configuration. Right click and select Show All. There are a lot of extra features here, which we'll cover in more detail later, but let's see what a few of them do right now. We have a virtual keyboard used for inputting MIDI information. Great for mobile users on the go. Some advanced functions for linear and loop recording are here, and you can select whether quantize while recording will be activated or not. We'll cover this in MIDI recording. Let's move on to locators. Locators are great for editing and looping. You could move your mouse to the upper area of the ruler, and it turns into a pencil so that you can adjust your left and right locator. Another fast way to set locators around any given part is to simply click on the desired part and press P on the keyboard. You can see the locators visually here and numerically here. If you set the cycle button to on and press play, you can then use the locators to loop a section over and over. Locators can also be used for editing, which we'll talk about later in a chapter called Advanced Editing. To jump to the left and right locator, simply click the L or R on the transport, or you can press the L and R keys on your keyboard. There are also punch in and out points and post and pre-roll features here. We'll go over these in level two of this tutorial series. Next, we have real-time jog and shuttle controls. The shuttle lets you rewind and forward at various speeds depending on where you hold it. Jog allows you to move forward or back in the music by rotating the dial round and round in either direction at your own speed. In the middle of these two dials, you can click on the plus and minus to move back and forth in the project in small increments. You can change the time format on the transport by clicking on the icon. In fact, you have two different time displays that you can set. You can switch between them with this button. The ruler you change on the left also changes the project page ruler. For timecode, there's a preference under transport that allows you to show timecode subframes. You can also set your own user definable frame rate here. To see your user definable frame rate, you can select the one that says user. These controls are for the arranger features in Cubase. This will be discussed in a later chapter. If your transport bar doesn't look like this, make sure you see the section on Customizing. You can, however, right-click on the transport to customize its appearance. For now, we can choose Default. Let's go back to the Preferences window and see some of the other options for the transport. We're only going to look at a few of them right now, but we'll eventually cover all of them throughout this series. If you want the cursor to appear thinner or thicker, you can change it here. And here we have Return to Start Position on Stop. This returns the cursor to the start position whenever you hit the stop button or the space bar. This is great for editing one section over and over. 
These next two will be discussed in the Punch In Punch Out video in level 2 of the series. If you press the fast forward or rewind buttons on the transport, turning this option on will stop playback. Depending on how you like to edit, you may want this on or off. Wind speed options adjust the speed of fast forward and rewind. When you press the fast forward and rewind buttons, you may want the speed to change whether you're zoomed in tight or far out. Having adjust to zoom on makes sure the cursor doesn't move too fast. It automatically adjusts to your zoom level. You can also just have a fixed speed. Stationary cursors means the cursor stays in the middle of the screen and the project moves underneath. Make sure the auto scroll button is turned on as this keeps the project cursor always visible. Locate when clicked in empty space allows you to locate or move the cursor, not only when you click on the ruler, but also in the empty space of the editing area. And that's a quick look at the transport panel and some of the available options in the preferences window.